Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to the control chart called the U chart, used for measuring proportions. It's essential that you first review the lesson for finding the right control chart so you can be confident the U chart is the right one for your situation. But for now, let's begin again with a review of how to read control charts. Well, how do you read control charts? Well, control charts plot the data points, usually using continuous type of data. Over time, they define a few things for us. They first define the observations, the data points from the data set that should be in a pre-sorted order, like a date-time order. Also, it would plot for us the mean, the average for all the data points. Also, the lower control limit, which represents three standard deviations below that mean, and the upper control limit, which is three standard deviations above the mean. Also, it would include any special cost tests, which could be any of eight different rules that could be predefined to help identify any potential special causes in the data. So just as a way of illustration, we can look at a particular control chart example, which tends to be similar for most of the control charts that we'll be looking at. First within this control chart, you can see that all the observation points are being highlighted here. We can see that there are 20 different observations that should be reflected here in time, like a date and time order, starting from the left all the way to the right. And then we also plot on here the mean, that is the average for the entire data set. All these observations, the average is reflected here within our sample average. Then we've got an upper control limit, which is three standard deviations above the mean. And then we've got a lower control limit reflected as three standard deviations below the mean. Then we have over here this region that falls within the red lines. This is the expected variation region, where that's where we would expect there to be some common cause variation falling back and forth around the mean, hopefully not falling outside of these upper and lower control limits, which is our unexpected variation region. That's where we might see some obvious special causes when they fall outside of our upper and lower control limits that are defined here by the red lines. And we also see in this example, there's one data point that falls below into that area. So we can say for this observation number seven, it failed the test because the data point fell outside of the lower or upper control limit area. Now, one thing to keep in mind that's really important is that control limits that are used in here in charts like this are not the same thing as spec limits, which is the LSL or US or USL. The spec limits are usually going to be tied to the voice of the customer, what the customer wants, the requirements that they set. Those are the targets. That's what the spec limits refer to. Control limits, though, are just reflecting how the process is performing of whether it's in control based off of the variation in, rel in relationship to the mean. So it's based off of three standard deviations from the mean. So you can have a process that's actually considered to be in control, but not necessarily meet the customer's requirements defined by the upper and lower spec limits as well as vice versa. All right, now let's more specifically dive into defining the U-chart. Well, the U-chart uses a Poisson distribution to measure the proportion of defectives per unit in a sample. Now again, it's looking at the how defective each unit is. So Poisson distribution measures the discrete probability of the number of events occurring within a fixed time frame based on some sort of known average rate. So as an example, could be measuring the number of accidents at a particular intersection or the number of calls to a business and that sort of thing. So it's ideal when the volume of units or like those opportunities vary across different stages such as per shift or per day or per week or so on. So unlike using raw percentage values, it accounts for the variation within the denominator of that percentage, or typically like within the volume. So as an example, you might have two different samples, each yielding a 10% defect, defect rate itself, and they might seem to be the same when you consider that same 10 percentage value. However, it would make a difference if the first sample if was like for a particular weekend day, and we have 100 total units in volume, so 10% means there were 10 defects. And you might have a second sample that was based off of a weekday where you have higher volume, like 1,000 units, and 100 defects on that day. So even though you might have 10% as maybe your defective rate for those two different samples, the fact that we're saying that one value has a much higher volume on one day than another is what's being accounted for within this type of test. So only the first four out of the eight special cause tests are available to run on these charts. And again, the special cause tests are what's reviewed in the measure phase in a separate lesson called testing for special cause variation, where all those different tests are evaluated. So what are the requirements for this particular chart? Well, the plotted data must be continuous, but they should represent discrete type of values, like a defective rate. Also, subgrouping is expected since we're dealing with discrete data anyway, and a column must identify those different groups. So how are you going to access with a mini tab? Well, you go to the stat menu, select control charts, then select attribute charts, and then choose U. 
Now let's look at an example of a U-chart. So now let's look at an example of what the U-chart would look like and it's going to be based off of the same type of data that we showed with the P-chart and the results are going to look very similar to the P-chart. The difference though is it going to be in the control limits and how those are calculated. So as we had in the example for the P-chart, this is what the raw data might look like from within Minitab, where you have one column here representing the different groups, again represented in this case over different periods of time they're looked at. Then we've got a column representing the volume for each of those different periods. And then you have the number of defects or how defective each of those periods are represented here as well as a count value. So this, if you want to calculate the defective rate, would be this would be the numerator and then this second column for volume would be represented as the denominator. Well, this is what the output chart might look like for a U-chart when you run that data through it. So it looks again like a typical control chart where you have an average that's calculated in here for the sample and you also have the lower and, and upper control limits that are calculated in here. And if you notice as we did with the P-chart that it's not going to be a straight line because we're not dealing with standard deviations with the fixed three standard deviations from the mean that's calculated. Instead, because we're dealing with proportions and these proportions vary day to day or period to period or whatever different groups we're looking at for the proportions, then we're going to see that the control limits are also going to be varying from period to period. So in this example, like we've seen before, we see that there's 70 errors on this one day or this one period that's represented. And 70 is much higher than all the other ones. So that particular data point does stand out among all the other ones and all, among all the different observations. However, the volume was also much higher for that day. Because the volume was higher, it doesn't re represent that much greater of a proportion. And as a result, it's still considered to be within control and to be acceptable. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, I could identify at least two critical metrics that you use in your organization that are based on discrete values. And try to get at least 20 different data points to use for this example. And sort that data, again, from oldest down to most current within your list. So they're all listed and sorted historically. And, and we're going to run that through a U-chart. And then as you run that through the U-chart, ask yourself a few questions. Was there any data point that failed the first test? That is, where the data points fell outside of the lower or upper control limits. And if there was, then can you explain what caused that particular failure? And does it appear to be a special cause or a common cause that would have caused that failure? And if any failures were noted, then what actions should be taken to help fix it or maybe to help prevent future failures? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.